So this is starting not to be fun anymore. Now I'm not talking about doing the videos. I'm just talking about the new normal. Um, I know I've been telling people think happy thoughts, um, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, um, stay focused on what you want to keep after this is over and think about those things you want to get rid of. But the truth of the matter is, is that after a while, this is starting to get a little old. Um, three stores today, went to three stores today to find toilet paper. Again, with the toilet paper, no toilet paper at Costco, no toilet paper at Target. So I decided to just stop by Food Line on my way home. 10 packs of toilet paper. Yeah, no, I didn't buy 10. You can only get two. So I got two for good for a while. But um, I'm not necessarily a complainer, but I am a venter, meaning that I like to get it off my chest. And once I espouse what I need to say, I feel pretty good. The problem is, is that it just doesn't seem to work in a situation like this. I want to be encouraging, but I also want to be honest and let you know where I am. And this week, I'm just tired of this new normal. So um, I thought of a story in the Bible that I love that always, for some reason, God just repeatedly used different verses and different stories to just keep me on track. And this is one of my favorite when David, his sent away from the Philistines. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and he's been booted out of the Philistine camp and basically told, hey, it's probably not a good idea that you've been hanging out with us because you kind of got this reputation of like killing Philistines. So we want you gone. So he gets up that morning with his mighty men and they go back to Ziklag where they've been hanging out and they get there and discover that the Amalekites have showed up, cleared out the camp, burned everything, stolen their wives, stolen their daughters, stolen their sons, everything's gone. And David is just beside himself. And you would think that as the leader that David has represented himself, that his people would gather around him and say, David, what do we do now? Let's cry out to the Lord and see where this is going to go. But that's not what happens. Look at what they say in verse 6 of this chapter. It says, I'm going to read to you from the second verse through 6 verse, uh, chapter 30 of 1 Samuel. And they took captive the women and all who were with it, both small and great, without killing one, and they carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Now David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one, because his sons and his daughters. These people had had it. They had not been living a good life to start with. And then on top of it, this happens. This is what I'm thinking of the people who just suffered from tornadoes. And we had a house fire in the neighborhood across from us a couple weeks ago. People are dealing with some serious things on top of the situation and chaos that we're in. But the part of this Bible story I like, there's a whole nother part that I won't get into. But in verse 6, it ends like this. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I've asked you to pray for others during this time, and I don't want you to stop doing that, of course. But this week, I want you to focus on something that's really important. There are times in our lives when we deal with serious trials, and we need to encourage ourselves. But don't miss the end of that verse. It says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This did not come from one incident. This came from David running for his life for years. It also came from David as a young shepherd boy who sat out in those fields with a bunch of sheep, repeatedly being tried with robbers or wolves or lions or bears, whatever that was coming at him. 
to keep him from doing his job as a shepherd. And he had time on his hands to meditate and grow in the Lord. He wrote psalm after psalm, lamenting his heart in frustration, so that when something like this happened and the people who were singing praises about him, when he was conquering things and conquering cities and nations, were the same people that were about to pick up stones and kill him. And he said, I got to encourage myself because nobody else is going to do it. There are times when we have to encourage ourselves, but the important thing is not to encourage ourselves with false hopes. When I mean, what I mean by that is that don't come up with your own coping mechanisms. It is important that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord this week. Spend some time in the Word, but spend some alone time with God. I don't know how difficult it is for you to be alone in your house. It's pretty difficult. I have to announce to everyone that I'm about to do a video so that I can sneak into my spot and do the video and not get interrupted. I just shooed my dog down a minute ago. So it's very difficult for me to have alone time, but it's also very important for me to have alone time with the Father. I pray that for you this week, that you will encourage yourself, that wherever you find yourself, if you're tired of the new normal, David was tired of his new normal and he had nowhere else to go but to the Lord. Remember, take time for yourself this week. Continue to pray for others. Do what you need to do. But when you hit that wall and you feel like, I'm just a little tired of this new normal, take it to the Lord encourage yourself in him and be strengthened. The important thing to remember is that we are going to be all right. It's all going to be all right because God is in control. I know I keep saying that, but you have to keep not just saying that, but you actually have to believe it. God is in control. God has got this. We're going to get through this. I have vented enough. I feel better, got it off my chest, and now I can move on. And I'm not looking for toilet paper for the next two weeks. Well, maybe a week. Take care of yourself and God bless.